Hey everyone, I'm Soham and in this video, we learn how to use Google BigQuery within a Java application. We'll go over the basics of BigQuery and how jobs are run. Next, we'll go over how to configure BigQuery on the Google Cloud Console so that you can use service keys to integrate with your application. Finally, we'll look at some example Java code to perform some common operations like querying data from a BigQuery instance, inserting data with queries, and inserting streaming data. BigQuery is a managed data warehouse and is part of the Google Cloud platform. It allows us to read and write large amounts of structured data at scales that would not be possible with a single database instance. The latency for these operations is high, so BigQuery is more suited to analytics and big data pipelines and not for real-time applications. Most operations on a BigQuery dataset can be described in terms of a job. When you want to run a query or transfer data from one dataset to another, you send a job description to your BigQuery instance, and it is executed as a job to get the final result. To enable your Java application to execute jobs on BigQuery, it requires a service account. Ideally, each application has its own service account. Service accounts let BigQuery know that an application is trusted and can run jobs on it. To create a service account, go to the Service Accounts page and click on Create Service Account. In the creation page, we need to provide a name and give the BigQuery admin role. Now we can create a key by going into the Keys tab of the service account we created. You should be able to download this key as a JSON file. We will be using this in our Java application later. Let's create our Java project now. I'll be using a standard Maven project for this example. If you want to know more about the folder structure or how to set up a blank Java project, you can read about it by going to the link in the description. Let's look at how we can read and print data from an existing table on BigQuery. For this example, we'll use the public Shakespeare dataset. You can view information about this dataset by going to the BigQuery console and searching for it under the BigQuery public data project. You can click on the dataset to see its structure. Now let's see what the data looks like. As you can see by running the sample query, this dataset gives us the word count for each of Shakespeare's works. For our example, we're going to get the top 10 most used words in Julius Caesar. Let's get back to our project folder and open the app.java file. First, we need to initialize the BigQuery client service. We can do this by importing the BigQuery options builder, setting our project ID, and then getting our service once the options are built. As I mentioned before, any query you want to execute on BigQuery needs to be sent as a job. A query job is a type of job that executes SQL queries. Let's first define the query that we want to execute and then create a query job configuration object from the query using its builder. We can then use the BigQuery service to create a new job from the job configuration. Once the job is created, it begins executing on BigQuery. We can wait for the job to complete using the wait for method. This method blocks until the job completes and returns null if the job doesn't exist anymore. To verify that everything ran correctly, we check for this null condition and also check if the job encountered any errors while running. If we get to this point, that means our job ran successfully. Now we can print the results. First, we print out a header line. We then get the query results and iterate through each row to print out its word and word count, followed by a new line. To run this program, we need the location of the JSON file we downloaded when creating a service account. We can then run the program by compiling it and providing the location of this file as an environment variable when calling the java jar command. Once the program runs, this should give us the expected result. We can now see the top 10 words and their word counts. It looks like the only non-filler word over here is Brutus. Now let's look at how we can create our own table. Let's go to the BigQuery console and create a new dataset under our project. 
For this example, we'll use sample dataset as the dataset ID. You can then run a create table query on the console. For example, let's create a vegetables table with an ID and a name field for each row. This will create a new vegetables table under the sample dataset. In order to insert data into a BigQuery table, you'll need to enable billing for your project. If you want to know more about starting a billing account, I'll leave a link in the description. Now let's see how we can modify our code to insert data into our table. Here, instead of a select query, we'll run an insert query. When we run write operations like insert, update, or delete, we get the result in the form of number of rows modified. We can get the number of rows inserted from the job result and print them to the console instead of printing the rows returned like last time. When we run this code, we can see that two rows have been inserted. We can confirm this by viewing the inserted data in the BigQuery console. In addition to insert queries, there's also another way to insert data into your table. This is through a process called streaming. When you insert data using queries, you need to create a job. Streaming enables you to move your data directly from your application into your BigQuery data store avoiding the overhead of creating a new job every time you want to insert new data. Instead of using a query, we need to define a map with the row names as the keys and the row values as the values. From this, we can create a streaming insert request, which we can pass to the BigQuery client instance to insert our data. Let's implement this in our Java application. First, we'll define the getRow method. This returns a map for each row that we want to insert with the row name as the key and the row value as the value. Since the value type is object, it can take any arbitrary type based on the data type of the row defined on BigQuery. To create a streaming insert request, we need to specify the table and dataset ID. We can then create an insert all request by using its builder and creating the rows using the get row method we defined previously. Here we create two more vegetables to insert into our table. Now we can create our BigQuery client like before, create the insert all request and use the insert all method of the client to insert this data into our table. We should also check for errors that occurred during this process. Here, each row can have an error when we attempt to insert it. Since we're attempting to insert multiple rows, we would have multiple potential errors that we have to iterate through. If there were no errors, we can print a success message to the console. When we run this code, we can see that our data was inserted successfully. We can check our table on the console to confirm the data that was inserted. BigQuery is a great tool for data analytics. Using the Java API, we can run any operation on our BigQuery instance within our Java application. This gives us a lot of power and flexibility and enables us to automate common operations on BigQuery or even use BigQuery to power a production application. You can read the complete code for all the examples here on GitHub. If you want to read more about the Java API, you can see the official API documentation. I've added the links for all of these in the description as well. So that about wraps it up for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.